for big ticket items or depending on your business, you might want to offer installment plans where your customers can pay you sort of over the course of several different months. Now, out of the box, Stripe has official support for some buy now, pay later payment method types like Affirm, Klarna, Afterpay, Clearpay. But in today's episode, we're going to implement our own installment plans using an advanced feature of subscriptions called subscription schedules. So we're gonna start a subscription with Stripe Checkout. We're gonna attach a schedule to it so that we can apply several different phases where we will collect installments over time and ultimately cancel the subscription after we've collected the right number of payments. In order to implement our installment plan, we're gonna collect an upfront amount of $300 and then we're gonna collect a $100 a month fee for three months. So it'll be a total of $600 and we're gonna have 300 upfront and then $100 a month after that over time. Something that we need to do first is head over to our product section and create a brand new product. We're gonna call this installment plan. And this description is really important for our installment plans because when we're using Stripe checkout, this will be the way that we're gonna to communicate to customers that this is gonna be $300 upfront and then it's gonna be $100 a month for three months. There isn't a default built-in way to apply a subscription schedule inside of checkout so that the customer sees all of the different phases. So instead, what we're gonna do is collect that upfront payment, and then after they have subscribed, we'll modify the subscription by attaching it to a schedule and building out our installments. So let's it's, we're gonna keep this description as is. Now let's build out our prices. So our upfront price is gonna be $300 that's gonna be recurring. We want that to still be recurring and monthly so that we can start a subscription. Next, we're gonna add another price and this is gonna be $100. Again, we're using standard pricing, recurring, monthly. We'll save our product and we're off to the races. Now, these are the two prices that we need to use inside of our server in order to collect payment. We're gonna use this first $300 a month price in order to start our subscription with Stripe Checkout. All right, from the terminal, I'm gonna use the Stripe CLI. You can use the Stripe CLI uh, in lots of different environments. I've installed it with Homebrew here on a Mac device, but you can install it in most environments. I'm gonna say Stripe samples create checkout single subscription. This is gonna install our subscription example, and we're gonna use the node environment on the server today. So after we have run that, we can CD into checkout single subscription. One one nice thing about the Stripe CLI is that once we're authenticated, it will automatically set our API keys in the .env. So this has pre-populated a primary key and a secret key that we can use. It's also got the webhook signing secret. Now for this specific example, it's expecting a price ID for basic and a price ID for pro. We're not actually gonna use these at all. Instead, what we're gonna do is hard code a price directly into server.js. This sample also comes with some HTML and JavaScript just to render out uh, the front end for a couple of different buttons that we can use when we're going through the process. What we wanna do is jump into our server and this is where we're gonna make some changes. So this example includes a route that accepts post requests to slash create checkout session. Now, by default, it's gonna receive the price ID from the front end using the request body, but we're gonna instead, again, we're just gonna hard code this ID for our example today. The price that we wanna use is this $300 a month price. That's gonna be sort of our setup price, okay? And th at this point, we're gonna create a checkout session and redirect the customer to the checkout sessions URL. And then inside of the webhook handler in a moment, we're gonna actually like attach to a schedule and work through that process. So let's open up a new tab here. We're gonna jump into the server directory and run npm install. That's gonna in install our dependencies. Now we could say npm start, that would start our server. Uh, what I'm gonna do instead is use nodemon for server.js so that we don't have to keep restarting the server. And that's gonna fire up our server for us. So if we head over to localhost 4242, we will see this example. So these two buttons are not gonna actually use starter or professional. Again, we didn't set those pro or basic IDs. Instead, either of these buttons is going to just redirect us and show the $300 a month price. Here you can tell why it's important to put that description in because here we're explaining that we're charging 300 up front and then $100 a month for three months. I have used the link here, but customers will be presented lots of different payment methods that they could enter to start their subscription. So today we're gonna to use this 4242 card to click subscribe. And this is going to start a brand new subscription at this point, we're still just charging $300 a month. It's gonna start a subscription that's gonna run forever and collect $300 a month each month. So if we were to grab this customer ID and jump over to the dashboard, we're gonna see that this customer is going to be charged $300 a month 
without any end date. Okay, so this customer is now on this installment plan. Their next invoice is for $300. They already paid an invoice for 300. So at this point, we're just collecting the setup fee. And now what we need to do is as soon as the subscription is created and that checkout session is successful, we're gonna create a schedule from this new subscription and use that to apply our installment plan. So the way this works is inside of the server, we have a route called slash webhook. This is handling webhook event notifications from Stripe. We have lots of different videos and documentation about how to set up your webhook handler. And it explains all of these lines here at the top about how we're gonna receive the post request notification from Stripe. And then at the bottom, we have some handling that allows us to determine what we wanna do when events fire on our Stripe account. Now, typically you need to have a public facing URL in order to build and integrate a webhook endpoint. One way you could do that is using a tool like ngrok, but what we're gonna do today is use the Stripe CLI again, and it has this special subcommand called listen, which we can use to forward to localhost 4242 slash webhook. Now that is going to form a direct connection between our Stripe account and our local running machine. And so when events happen on our Stripe account, they're gonna be delivered to this localhost 4242 event. And we'll also see some of those event notifications log out to the console here. Okay, so now what we wanna do is in the case of a checkout session completed event, we wanna create a schedule from the subscription that was related to this. So we're gonna create a new checkout session object here from data.object and we're gonna create a new schedule from stripe.subscriptionschedules.create and we can pass in from subscription and pass it an ID of a subscription. It just so happens that this checkout session object that we just created has reference to the new subscription. It has the ID of the new subscription. So this is what we need to pass down. We're gonna create the schedule from the subscription. A subscription schedule object has many phases. So let's go look at the API reference for subscription schedules. So here we can look at the schedule object and we'll see that kind of like the, the shape of an object and what it looks like. The important thing here is that we're gonna talk about phases. So uh, the phases are each of the different ways the subscription will change over time as the schedule advances. And so in the very first phase, when we create a schedule from a subscription, it only has one phase. And that phase consists of the data uh, from the existing subscription. So it has all of the information about that existing subscription's current phase. The things that are really important on this phase is the start date, the end date, and any line items. So anytime we want to update a schedule, we need to pass in all of those arguments. So we're gonna pass in the items. We're also gonna pass in the start date and end date of the subscription. We're gonna head back to the server and we're gonna update our schedule. First, we'll console.log that a new schedule is created. Here, we'll just say like schedule created and we'll put in the ID of the schedule. Next, what we wanna do is update the schedule. So we're gonna say schedule is stripe.subscriptionschedules.update. The first argument is the ID of the schedule. And the second argument is a big options block. We're gonna pass in all the information that is going to update the schedule. So the first is that we wanna include some phases. Now we also want to define an end behavior. So an end behavior is what should happen after we finish all of the phases. Now in the default case, the end behavior is that we will release the schedule, meaning that the subscription will continue to live on using the final phase of the list of phases. So in our case, because we're trying to create an installment plan that's gonna have a, a specific end date, we want the end behavior to be canceled so that after the subscription schedule finishes its last phase, it cancels the subscription and stops collecting any further payments. Now we also wanna pass in some phases. That's gonna be the first phase will be the existing phase from the current subscription that was just created inside of checkout. The second phase is going to be our brand new phase that's going to modify the subscription so that it only collects $100 a month for three months. So the way that we say that we wanna collect $100 a month is we say um, we're gonna pass in a list of items and that list of items is gonna have a price and a quantity of one. 
the price here is gonna be our price ID from the product that we just created. This is gonna be the ID of the $100 a month price for the product that we just created. So we're gonna enter that in. Another thing that's important that's part of the phase is we want to set the number of iterations. So we can set the number of iterations in our case to three because we wanna collect $100 three times. At the end of this final phase, we should be canceling the subscription. Now this spread operation for phases, now we don't actually have a variable called phases yet. So we need to construct phases from our existing schedule. So our existing schedule already has a single phase. That phase, we want to pull off the start date, the end date, and the items from the existing phase. And we don't need to map over or modify any of the items. Those can live on as they stand. Let's also console.log our new phases. And we'll also console.log uh, our schedule, our new schedule. Okay. We have our listener set up to forward events to our local webhook endpoint. We've got our endpoint set up. Let's go through the process one more time. We're going to say restart the demo, go through checkout, and now when we subscribe, we should modify our underlying subscription so that it is attached to a schedule. That schedule is going to have a, an explicit end date. It's also going to have a set number of iterations. Let's grab our customer ID, jump over to the dashboard and take a look at what this customer looks like. So they are on this installment plan. That's great. Now you can see that the next invoice is set for $100 on September 30. And we can see that the subscription is going to end on December 30. So that's all looking great. If we scroll down, we can see that we are we already collected $300 for the first payment and that the next payment is going to be, again, this $100 payment for the next phase. This is awesome and it allows us to kind of like go through the process. But you might be wondering, how can I confirm that this is actually going to work as expected? So there's a really helpful tool. This is kind of like a bonus section. There's a really helpful tool that we can use to experiment and uh, modify the timelines for our objects so we can sort of time travel and that's called a test clock. So let's jump back into our code here. Now, before we actually go through checkout, what we want to do is pass in a customer object that is attached to this thing called a test clock and we can advance the test clock through time to see what kind of changes happen to that object over time. So here, what we want to do is we're going to create a new customer object. So we're going to say customer is await stripe.customers.create. That'll make an API called the stripe to create a customer. Now, when we create that customer, we want to attach it to a test clock. So before we even create the customer, we want to create a test clock. And this is going to be something similar, stripe.testhelpers.testclocks.create. And this expects a, an argument called frozen time. And frozen time is going to be a new date dot get time. And that's going to give us something that we need to divide by a thousand to get a Unix timestamp. All right, so we're freezing time at time.now, essentially. Now, this test clock is going to be something that we want to pass as an argument when we create the customers. So we're going to say test clock is test clock.id. And that should create our customer object attached to the test clock. Now, this test clock thing is an object that we can uh, advance through time to simulate uh, what events are going to fire on the object. So now, now that we have this customer, we can use this as an argument to create our checkout session so that every time a new subscription is created, it is attached to this existing customer, which is attached to the test clock, so on and so forth. Frozen time needs to be an integer, so we're going to say parse, parse int of this thing. Okay, so now let's go through our flow. We're going to click on select. We're brought to the checkout page. We can click on subscribe. Now we can grab our customer ID and take a look in the dashboard. So we're going to search for that customer. And now we can see that this customer is in a clock object simulation. That's pretty cool. Uh, so now if we drill into the object here, we can say we want to advance time to see what's going to happen. So right now it's at August 31st, 2022. I'm recording at a nice and early 8.46 a.m. And we're going to say that we want to advance time. So we can click on this object and say, let's go one month forward. And we can go up to two months or up to two uh, iterations of the billing cycle forward. So this will technically allow us to go all the way to October 31st. So let's actually go all the way to October 31st and click advance. Now, as this 
clock is advancing, if, if we were to look at the output for our listener, we'll see that our, a lot of events are firing. That's because as the object is advancing through time, there are several different webhook event notifications that are gonna fire on your account. You'll wanna make sure that you're sort of handling all of those different scenarios. That is also one of the reasons why it does take a bit of time for this to advance. All right, now we can see that the clock's time is October 31st at 8.46 a.m. So we advanced from August 31st to October 31st. And if we were to scroll down here, we'll see that we did collect the 300 already. Then we also collected a $100 installment. And in one day, we have a, an upcoming invoice that's gonna collect another $100. So let's advance one more time. In this case, we can advance all the way to December 31st. December 31st at 7.46 a.m. So we are going to advance to December 31st, but recall that our installment plan ends December 30th. So this is gonna say that this is gonna cancel on December 30th. So the clock is continuing to advance. All right, the clock time is now December 30th at 7.46 a.m. And we can see that the installment plan is canceled. We're no longer gonna collect any more payments. So if we scroll down, we can see that we collected 300 up front then 100, then 100, and then 9677. Oh no, okay, we were supposed to collect 100 at the end. So this is a great example of why you wanna go through and test with the simulation so that you can ensure that your phases are configured as expected. So this is actually because the default proration behavior is to create a proration, but what we want is for it to not apply any prorations because we want our full $600. So let's go back into the server code. And in our second phase, where we are creating the second phase here, we're gonna say proration behavior is none. We don't want to create any prorations. Now, if the proration behavior is set to none, that means that this last iteration, if there is a final invoice and it's a partial invoice, then no invoice will be created because it does not want to collect a prorated invoice. So what we wanna do is even if we only wanna collect 300 more dollars, we're gonna change this to four so that we don't prorate that last little bit. Okay, so this is gonna collect 300 up front and then three installments of exactly $100. Because we're setting proration to not prorate, that is not going to create an invoice for the final month. All right, let's go ahead and take this for a spin. So we're gonna restart our demo, click on select. And once we subscribe, again, it's gonna create a subscription schedule from this new subscription. We should get a new customer ID that we can go take a look at in the dashboard. We'll jump over to the dashboard and look at that customer. Now it's updated so that it will end on January 30th. First we'll advance time to October 31st. Then we will again advance time to the end of when we expect to take the last payment, which is December 30th. All right, we will again advance time. This time we're gonna go uh, to December 31st. And by December 31st, we should have fully collected all of the payments that we need to collect. So we need to adjust the time ever so slightly there. And we'll take a look at what happens after that. All right, now we are at December 31st. You can see that the subscription will cancel on January 30th, but now we can see that there are gonna be no further invoices collected. So if we scroll down, we can see now that we collected our $300 upfront, then three $100 payments after that, and we are done collecting payment from the customer. We have collected our $600 for our big ticket item and we are ready to move on. Now the subscription is technically still active and that's fine because it will automatically cancel on January 30th without taking any payment. Again, that's because we are setting that proration to none. So we could test this and we could even move all the way to perhaps February 28th or something and experiment and see that this will only collect that first three $100 installments. All right, so our clock has advanced to February 28th of 2023. And if we scroll down, we can see that we did only collect 300 up front and then 300 over three months. And we can see that the subscription is canceled. We will no longer collect any more payments. So that is how you set up an installment plan using subscription schedules. Again, we use Stripe Checkout, but you can technically start a subscription schedule and use the payment element to confirm the start of that subscription. Hopefully this was useful. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.